Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I talked about a deal that was percolating in yesterday's video. I don't know if you remembered, but it was between Sumitomo and SBI. And this was a memorandum of understanding that was signed in February, I believe. Well, it was announced that they came to an agreement today. And it is a really, really big deal. This is a wide ranging capital tie up and the Sumitomo Mitsui Financial Group has agreed to a partnership. They're first going to bring millions of yen into SBI and it sent the SBI stock soaring today up 4.17% on a very red day on the Nikkei. And one of the first things they're going to do is take a 20% stake in the securities company that SBI has built online and it targets the younger customers in their 20s and 30s. So the millennials are a demographic that Sumitomo is very interested in because most of their uh, clientele is a little bit older. Now, also, in addition, you have to remember that the FX coin, this new exchange that is backed by SBI, also received an investment from the Sumitomo Corporation. Sumitomo Corporation is Japan's second largest bank, and they made an announcement on the 23rd that they they being FX coin, the exchange is they're going to uh, move forward with their um, testing. Although, you know, I, I, it's not really testing. I think it's what they're going to do is they're going they're going to. Well, I guess you could say testing. They're going to use XRP and remittances. And and it was kind of odd. They said they're going to use the digital asset both domestically and internationally. I, I don't know if something got uh mixed up there that came from the senior strategist maybe it's possible they're going to use xrp domestically too i just don't know we just don't know yet but it is a big deal that they made the announcement that they are going to uh move forward with xrp and it's backed by the second largest bank in japan and now the group that is under the corporation has pledged this these millions of yen into not only the online securities website but also into a new fund that has uh been created so i think when we talk about fintech and ai projects we could definitely say that describes the cashless payments so it could mean that we even see something come in the way of money tap which money tap is the mobile payments app that has been launched and there is every intention to expand this in to the international markets and it has the intention according to the presentation material that comes out in the quarterly shareholders meetings to use xrp so this is just the the global stage that Ripple and XRP have now, and also the validation of the digital strategy that Mr. Kitao has taken. I think it's, it, I think it's really, really rocking the fintech world. So this is the company that um, the Sumitomo Mitsui Group is going to take a twenty percent stake in. It's the Ni Neo Mobile Securities. This is a place where you can trade stocks and FX using your phone. And SBI is the nation's top online broker. So this new fund, which will be 1 billion yen, that's $930 million, it is going to be uh, nurturing these digital technologies like FinTech, blockchain, 5G. And it's probably, the timing on this is probably uh, having something to do with the revised crypto laws, which are going to go into effect this Friday. And I think Japan has uh, even more regulatory clarity than ever before. I think this is going to be an amazing year 
in Japan for digital assets, you know, the security tokens, uh, everything. It's just really getting very exciting. All right. Um, this is a reminder. So there is a Bank of America Blockchain Technology 101 webcast that you can register and attend because we want to see now that they are leaning on Ripple technology, we want to try to see what it is that they're doing. And they're going to talk about um, learning how Bank of America is using blockchain technology and how it is being leveraged in the fintech world of Bank of America. So if you want to join, um, I'll put a link to this in the description below. And it is uh, tomorrow, basically, uh, the 28th of April. And it runs from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time you know, in the United States. So that is... Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to get in there and I'm going to ask some Ripple questions. And another reminder, in 19 days, 15 hours, 37 minutes and 20 seconds, there is uh, a virtual conference called the Crypto Asia Summit. Now, it's free and it's going to be really interesting. I want to see how they're going to, because Swell is going virtual too as well. I want to see how they pull off these virtual events and you can reserve your free ticket and you shouldn't wait if you want to do it because the limited free spots are um yeah there's a, the free spots of, that are available are limited so i think uh don't wait too long if that is of interest to you and of course i get the question all the time about price and i, I am not surprised and i just think um one of the best answers that i ever read was from david schwartz and it was on quora that i that i found it and he talks uh in the direct relationship to a question that asked that if large banks were to adopt x rapid and start using xrp how would that impact the tokens value. So I think this is a great answer and I'm going to put a link to it in the description below and you can really see how it has the possibility to make an impact by really using those piles of XRP all over the globe to facilitate the on-demand liquidity. That's why we pay attention so much to the new corridors that open up. And last but not least, I don't know if this is a joke or not. This is Tim Draper, and he said he's going to eat a raw egg if Bitcoin doesn't reach 250,000 by 2023. My first reaction was, oh my gosh, Tim, I don't think you've traveled to Japan, or maybe it's just a joke. But if you come to Japan, eating raw eggs is a very common occurrence. And the eggs are safe here. And you'll find this is an example of sukiyaki. And it's the mm, most famous traditional Friday night meal for families in Japan. Or you might find it served on top of some udon noodles with a little bit of negi, which is like a green onion, but a little bit more mild. And this is katsubushi, which is a dried very small tuna called a jack tuna, I think is what they call it, but it's very yummy. It's used in a lot of recipes in Japan. It creates, it's part, it's an essential to creating a dashi or a broth in Japan. And this is a must have ingredient for that. So it's, um, yeah, it's a very unique flavor and it maybe takes a little bit of acquiring taste, but it's very, very good. And then this hands down is the most popular breakfast in Japan. And it's um, your raw egg on top of warm white rice. And then these flakes, this kake, this is actually called tamago kake gohan. And these flakes come in a variety of different flavors. This one looks to me to be uh, definitely wakame and hmm. I'm not sure what else. This, I'm not sure. Maybe sesame. Yeah, possibly. But all the flavors are, are great. And number one, breakfast.
Or if you want my favorite way to eat this, it's with the nama tamago, the raw egg on top of white rice with this little shirasu. And this shirasu that you see is a very, very small boiled iwashi, sardine. And you can also eat it on the side here uh, with the daikon radish and a little bit of soy sauce. This combination is unbelievably good. And if you can't see that little fish, this is a close up shot. Now don't get squeamish because I never imagined in a million years that I would eat the things that I do. But after living here, uh, there are some amazing tastes with food that in the West you could never think or dream of trying. But uh, yeah, I am in love with all these yummy tastes. And uh, it comes from that little white fish comes from Sagami Bay, which is just about an hour south by train from Tokyo. And you go just right on the Tokaido Sen to Chigasaki. And it's a fantastic beach town. It's a surfing town. It, it is uh, this pretty. It really has a gorgeous view of Mount Fuji. And then what you're seeing here on the left is Enoshima Island. But uh, this is where that little fish comes from. It's famous um, for it. So you can eat it fresh and find a lot of restaurants in the area that serve it, sometimes raw, sometimes uh, boiled, sometimes dried. And if you can't do it that way, then at least just try the cracker. OK, everybody. I found a live cam of Tokyo. This is Tokyo right now. We had some thunder and lightning earlier today, but it seems to have cleared up. And um, what you'll notice here is uh, this is uh, the Rainbow Bridge and this is Tokyo Tower. I used to live right coming down off this off ramp here. I used to live right about there for about seven years. So I wanted to really see what was going on today in Tokyo because I'm not out there and you can see the traffic's not too bad, but actually traffic is not too bad at any time in Tokyo. There's such an, uh, an efficient infrastructure for mass transportation, uh, especially the trains and the subways that traffic just isn't a big deal here. But the blue is what I wanted to point out. So the Rainbow Bridge is blue and the Tokyo Tower is blue. And what's happening as of yesterday evening, they are lighting up towers in 11 cities around Japan. And actually this is a global trend where the movement is to uh, use this color, whether it's projection mapping or it's uh, with a blue LED and it's in honor of the medical workers that are working so hard all around the world. So this is the Tokyo Tower with the arigato on the side and we're going to see this from sunset to midnight until May 2nd. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.